Hey everybody, it's George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering the questions I get from around the world. Let's dive into this one. Uh, this first question is from Alex from Richmond, Indiana. Alex says, hey DG, I've gotten the chance, I haven't gotten the chance to ask you a question in a long time. So sorry if this is kind of out of the blue. Alex, it's great to hear from you no matter when you're right, buddy. He said, anywho, <laughs> I saw a nature documentary in which a hippo was filmed scavenging on another animal's carcass. I wonder if this behavior could have existed in Ceratopsians. After all, they had powerful jaws like a hippo's, and they certainly would have been able to scare away any predators. What do you think? Alex, that is what I like about uh, so many of these questions I get. Um, you guys really think outside of the typical norm, uh, and I really appreciate these kind of questions. My first comment is we have to look at modern animals as a way to understand the behaviors uh, of prehistoric animals. And the first time I saw that film of that hippo eating meat, I was stunned. But um, what an animal needs to survive by getting a variety of, of, uh, of nutrition um, in his diet. And I guess that hippos, at least that one, required something in its diet that it wasn't getting from the plant material that it normally lives off of. So it was a real oddity to see that. Uh, so could Ceratopsians do it? Certainly they could, absolutely. They had the, the mouth design and jaw design to be able to eat meat if they wanted. Uh, they had the teeth to grind it up, but usually what happens is um, they may not, those animals may not have had the bacteria in their stomach to really decompose uh, uh, meat. So maybe they could do it, but I don't know how much nutrition they could actually extract from that. But it's an incredibly interesting question, and it's a great observation, Alex, and I'm, I really appreciate that you're looking at things from that point of view. Is it possible? My answer is absolutely. Is it probable? That's a tough one, man. Had I not seen that footage of a hippo eating meat, I would have said, there's no way that animal is strictly an herbivore. Well, no, the hippo proved me wrong. So, uh, great question, man. All right, uh, Shane from Tempe, Arizona. I used to live near Tempe, Arizona, Shane. He says, hi, Dinosaur George. I am eight years old. Nice to hear from you, Shane. I want to ask you this question. Who is older, T-Rex, Megalosaurus, or Iguanodon? Who will win in a fight between T-Rex and Megalosaurus? My favorite dinosaur is T-Rex, thanks. Okay, who is the oldest? Well, uh, Megalosaurus, or probably Iguanodon, is the oldest of the three. In fact, I would say that would be the case. Iguanodon would be the oldest of the three. It was around longer, and it was a very successful dinosaur. Iguanodons, for whatever reason, were incredibly successful little dudes. Now, who would win in a fight between Megalosaurus and T-Rex? It would be no... Uh, no question in my mind that Tyrannosaurus rex was far superior to Megalosaurus in every single aspect. And it would have been like a heavyweight fighter taking on a lightweight. One bite, one punch from Tyrannosaurus would have ended that fight relatively quickly. So I think your favorite dinosaur would have done some pretty nasty damage to a dinosaur like Megalosaurus, Shane. Okay, Thomas from, uh, I think this is Widnes, Inglis, England. Is it Widness? Wideness? I don't know. I'm probably butchering that, Thomas. He says, Dear Dinosaur George, how do we know that dinosaurs did not have ear flaps like us humans and most other living animals? Great question, Thomas. We don't. We don't know for certain. The idea that dinosaurs had uh, just basic ear holes is based on the fact that there is a relationship with reptiles. Uh, and of course with birds. And birds and reptiles don't have ear flaps like we do, so um, probably, my, my guess would be that we're probably right in thinking that it doesn't have them. Um, I've never studied how the human ear flap attaches to the skull. I don't know if it leaves actual marks on the skull. See, a lot of times when things connect to bone, it leaves a roughened spot where the muscle can connect or the cartilage can connect. I've never looked closely enough at a human skull to know if it leaves that mark. If it does leave it, then we have the ability to look at dinosaur skulls and we could see that same kind of mark. But to my knowledge, that doesn't exist. In fact, I'm almost certain that there are no markings around the ear opening of a dinosaur skull and therefore it suggests that they didn't have ear flaps. But <clears throat> We don't know for certain, and that's a very good question, Thomas. That's really that's really cool. All right, uh, my friend, I think it's Jasapan or Hasapan from Nyborg, Denmark. I always butcher your name, and I, I apologize if I'm getting it wrong, buddy. He says, hello, George. Were dinosaurs warm-blooded or cold-blooded? <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is kind of going today. Um, 
The best evidence suggests that they were more like warm-blooded animals, much more warm-blooded than cold. I say that because we find that some dinosaurs lived in regions that would have gotten very cold during the winter, and to be able to deal with the, that cold uh, stuff, they were too big to burrow underground and hibernate, so they probably were able to deal with the cold, and that suggests that they were warm-blooded. Also, uh, we look at other things like uh, footprints can suggest how fast an animal walked, and they're walking at speeds that are more warm-blooded than cold-blooded. Um, they also migrate, uh, and migration is not something cold-blooded animals can do for great distances. Uh, Warm-bloods, on the other hand, have the ability to walk great distances. So my best guess is that these dinosaurs, that all dinosaurs, were much more closely uh, similar to warm-blooded animals than cold. Perhaps they may have even just been outright warm-blooded. But I say more closely because dinosaurs may have been something a little different. Uh, we think of things as either being warm-blooded or cold-blooded. They may have been something sort of in between the two. All right, Kevin from Austin, Texas says, why does baryonyx not like other predators in its territory? Well, Kevin, um, the reason why predatory dinosaurs probably did not want other predators in its environment is because it would have had to compete with that animal for food. Um, predatory animals today don't really like the company of, of members of their own family unless they are living in family groups or unless it's mating season where they want to see somebody from their own uh, species. So baryonyx would have been no different than any other predatory dinosaur in that it would not want any other predator, whether it's from its same, fan, uh, same species or others, they just don't want them in the territory because they don't want to compete with them for a food source. Even if food is plentiful, predatory dinosaurs were probably pretty selfish animals, if that's the right term. Uh, they just don't want anybody to, to, they don't want to share their food with anybody. They're pretty rough animals. It was a rough life back then. So that's probably why Baryonyx and everybody else just wouldn't want anybody around. All right. If you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Uh, I know that a lot of you submit questions over and over and over, and yet yours never seem to get answered. The way that they answer these questions is literally, uh, because we get a thousand of these things a week now, uh, they can't even open all of them. Sometimes they just go down the page very quickly and try to find a question that sort of stands out. Um, I will tell you this. Uh, there was one person that wrote 300 questions in the span of two days. Uh, it was the exact same question, just submitted it over and over and over again. Um, that probably has the exact opposite effect. When these folks are reading these things and they keep seeing the same name pop up hundreds and hundreds of times. They just delete all of them. So, so I wouldn't suggest that you send that many, but I do suggest that if you are submitting your questions and they're not getting answered, doing them one after the other after the other is not the way to do it. You should submit one, wait a day, submit it again, wait a day, submit it again. At least that way there's a better chance that it will be read. I apologize that I can't do all of them, you guys, but I just don't physically have the time to be able to answer every single one. All right, uh, make sure to take care of the people around you and take care of yourselves. It's certainly important for you young people out there. Always make sure to practice your reading because truly reading skills are very important uh, and will certainly help you in anything you want to do. And finally, I always appreciate the courtesy and the kindness, and I appreciate that very much. Um, too often, we forget about how important it is to be courteous to other people, so I certainly appreciate so many of you being courteous to me. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.